sickness. And so if you're a visual person, then, then you imagine in this unseen world, um, almost separate compartments. And you have one place in the unseen world where you have Lazarus, and you have Hezekiah, and you have Jacob and Isaac, and you have them there with Abraham, and they're in a place of comfort. They've been brought there by the angels, and they're, they're ministered to. And then you have this great chasm, this great pit, this abyss, and, and then you have a compartment over here where you have the rich man. And, and you, you can't travel from one side to the other, but yet there's, there's some realization that you're all in the grave, you're all in Sheol, but you're separated. And those who are not by Abraham's side are in the place of torment. And it's that compartment of the underworld where people are in torment is what we call hell. So all of it together would be Hades, or all of it together would be Sheol, but then we have a, a compartment there where the wicked go, where we call that hell, where they are in torment, in flames, in agony, the experience there of this rich man, as opposed to Lazarus and Abraham, who are in place of comfort, but yet still in Sheol, still in Hades. But there's even more that we can say about it. I want to think more about the pit, or this chasm, or this abyss that is described in the underworld. Because the Bible speaks about degrees of punishment. And the degrees of punishment correspond to where you go when you die and, and where you are in terms of this pit or chasm. It's not just the righteous go with Abraham and, and the unrighteous go here in torment. But that even in torment there is depths of hell in which you might descend based upon your wickedness here on the earth. Consider this passage. 2 Peter 2, 4, which says this, God did not spare angels when they sinned, but cast them into hell and committed them to chains of gloomy darkness to be kept until the judgment. Now, the word translated hell in 2 Peter 2, 4 is actually the Greek word Tartarus. That's helpful for us because uh, we think about Hades, which is a Greek word for the underworld, and Tartarus was the word that the Greeks would use for the, the underworld underneath Hades, the, the, the lower hell, the place of torment where God would mete out his punishment. And so when, the, when Peter here refers to Tartarus, he's referring to the, the lower hell, you know, this more severe place of punishment where these angels are now consigned to eternal chains and gloomy darkness. There's a depth there because of the wickedness of their deeds. But Isaiah 14 continues and says, but you are brought down to Sheol, to the far reaches of the pit. And Revelation 20 describes this as the bottomless pit, an infinite pit. That's how far down the devil is. And I believe according to Revelation 20, that the devil was cast down into that bottomless pit at the coming, the death, the resurrection, and the ascension of the Lord Jesus Christ. It was that time at the incarnation that the devil was cast down into that bottomless pit. And it says in Revelation 9, 11, they have a king over them. The angel of the bottomless pit his name in Hebrew is Abaddon, and in Greek he is called Apollyon. And so what the Bible does here is say, Abaddon the place, that lowest hell, the deepest of the chasm, the deepest of the abyss, the bottomless pit. Well, that name is also the name that is on Satan himself. That he is identified with that lowest hell. The one who tried to ascend to the heights of heaven has been cast down to the deepest of deeps. And now he is not the Lord of light, he is the Lord of darkness. His name is Abaddon. His name is Apollyon. And now he uses from his place in the lowest hell, he spews out forth all kinds of evil upon the earth to bring God's judgment. He's not higher than God. He's not in charge. But he's a tool being used of God. But he is the Lord of darkness. And he is down in the depths of that darkness in the underworld. 